Welcome to Wild Bill's Media and the Arts Podcast, and today is an episode of Artist Showcase, and we have the one and only Gene Adam here, former lead singer of Ice Earth, and currently a member of Jacob's Well. How you doing today, Gene? I'm doing great, sir. How are you? Oh, I am wonderful, Gene. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for your time and um, the opportunity to do this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Absolutely, man. It's an honor. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it. Um, how's the weather there in Florida? I hate it. It's like so cold this winter. Like normally, you know, we have like a cold day here or there and we're bragging about how beautiful it is. But this year has been like, it's like 2020 keep giving and giving on into 2021. It's like I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and jeans and I'm like, man, I hate this. <laughs> oh, I know exactly how you feel. It's funny, you know, um, the thing about being in the Carolinas, we always joke around with people about how in one day you can get all four seasons, <laughs> right. you know, and um, <laughs> and lately, I don't know what it is the last few weeks. Uh, Mother Nature has just decided she's going to do what she wants to do. She can't make her mind up whether she wants to hail or rain or sleet or snow. So it's just wow. it's just been crazy, man. <laughs> I've seen on the news and stuff, I've seen the snow and all that stuff you guys are having. That's crazy. We, we oh, got yeah. nothing like that here. We just have, it's just colder than normal here. Like, you know, if it gets below like 60, we're complaining here in Florida. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a little while since I've been to Florida. Actually, I went down to Disney in about 2006, around in like November. And honestly, man, you know, it was beautiful all day. And, I noticed that, like, when it got down towards night, if you had on, like, a light, long sleeve shirt, you know, you were good. And yeah, so I was like, man, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's the way we like it here. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good, man. I, that's awesome. <laughs> so um, uh, how does it feel to be a part of, I want to say, a ice earth resurgence? Um, basically, you know, you had the, the Purgatory EP that dropped in 2018, and then the the reissue of Enter the Realm right. in 2019 for the first time on vinyl and everything. And now you got the remix remastered uh, version of the 30th anniversary of the debut. I mean, how does that make you feel after all this time? It's crazy. You know, it's like uh, since 2018, I guess, probably 2017 is when John contacted me again and uh it's just been uh it's been really cool to uh just to you know because like i was out of it for a while i kind of just like went into hiding for a while i did the unearth thing and all that stuff but it was like you know i i don't know i just felt like uh i didn't know where i stood on it all but then a friend of mine who plays in a band called as they sleep his name is aaron um, he said, dude, you got, you know, like all these fans out there, you know, why are you like hiding? You know, they want to hear from you. And then John contacted me. And now it's like, it's like the boom rush over here. It's like, you know, everything all at one time between iced earth and purgatory and Jacob's well, it's like, holy cow. I've never, I wish I could have had this much success when I was 25 years old, but God's <laughs> oh. is what it is, man. You know what I mean? You just take it as it comes. Well, you know, that 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 is so true. Um, I just, you know, I believe, uh, and I'm a firm believer, um, that uh, everything comes full circle, you know? And that, um, and I am honestly, you know, glad to see that things are turning around for you and, and you're getting to see all the success because, like I said, um, you know, the first album was one of my favorite albums of Eister. And I just think that, you know, you were the man, right man for the, for the job. Sometimes I wish you were still in Ice Earth, but you know, that's the way things go sometimes. But um, I look back on it, you know, and my as being a fan of Ice Earth and your work in Jacob's Well and everything. I just I don't I don't really know what to say other than, you know, I love your work and I love your songs and I just wish there was more of it out there, you know, honestly. Well, I appreciate that. You know, when the first Ice Earth album originally came out, you know, there's no there's no hiding that I took a lot of heat, you know, back then. And 
there were mixed reviews on whether people actually, you know, liked me, thought I was legit or whatever. And, you know, I've never been one who cares what people think about me. I, I've lived my whole life doing what I'm going to do. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't have to listen. There's, there's a, you know, there's plenty out there to listen to. So I never hesitated to do what I was going to do. And, uh, you know, the first, the first release, I, I thought, you know, we were on a limited budget and the, the production was not, you know, very good. Uh, I mean, it wasn't bad, but, you know, like, I think now with the remastered, it just, you know, it sounds so much better. And it's just, it's just nice to know that, you know, like, especially I think the purgatory thing really was what did it was like, wow, you know, people, you know, finally saying, okay, this dude's legit or whatever. And, you know, I don't yeah. need to hear that, but it was nice to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, you know, I totally understand that. And, you know, I wanted to say that, you know, I think, the heat you get sometimes is unfair because um, I look at you take fences like Laura Zorich. I don't know if you keep up with Metallica or anything, but I know like, especially nowadays, people always gripe about, Oh, he's not a, you know, he's not a great drummer. He's never been a great drummer. Um, you know, they don't like his style. They hate the way he plays, but I'm sitting here thinking then all of these fans that are saying that are the same people that will tell you like Master of Puppets is one of the greatest right. like metal albums of all time, in which it may be. And I think it's if you would ask anyone, it's in their top five albums. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, guys, y'all, some of y'all say it's a perfect record and you can't think nothing bad about it. Do you realize that the guy that's drumming on that album is the same guy you're complaining about today? You know? Right. It, right. it, I just, I just think that's kind of crazy. The the way I, the way I've always looked at it is, you know, like I like these bands that have stuck together, like the original. You know, maybe a death might have taken one of them out or something, but you know, like Metallica, the Rolling Stones, and I mean, uh, there's tons of bands, whoever you want to name, you know, that have stuck together with the uh, the original, most of the original members, and the thing that I admire most about uh, some of those bands are none of them are really the most like you know James Hetfield's not the most talented singer in the world and they never thought to hire a singer you know that's their sound and that's what made yep. them who they are and they're sticking with it you know screw yep. what everybody else says you know whoever you want whatever band you want to name Slayer or whatever you want to say that that stuck to that mantra you know that that's what it is and I, I mean you know, Iced Earth has had a lot of members uh, throughout the time, but I think they've stayed true to their sound, you know, and they, uh, you know, I, there's, you know, few, there's a few that have stuck out as far as singers like Matt and Stu and all that stuff. And, you know, and then, but I think my, I like, like bands that like screw what everybody says about our talent that we're, we're sticking together. So I think, you know, that's something I look for. Uh, that's why me and, and Jamie and Jacob Swell have stuck together. And I think that's why, even though there's been a lot of changes in Iced Earth, I think that's why we're all still friends because we, we stuck together. You know, we, uh, even though things happen and people move on or whatever, man, there was a brotherhood and there's always been a brotherhood amongst all the members past and present. You know, I think there's that brotherhood there. That's great. That's awesome. And I'm, and I'm glad to know that, you know, there is a brotherhood among you guys because, you know, I've always looked at it. A band's like any other thing, you know, if, you know, there's no reason in making enemies. If things just doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, it's no, no personal thing against someone else, you know? And I've, and honestly, I think sometimes with bands um, and I've heard this a, late, a lot lately about bands staying at the, uh, the party too long. You know, and um, I don't know. I, and I was going to ask you, I didn't know if you heard it, but have you heard the new ACDC record? I have heard it. Not all of it, but I've heard, uh, you know, several tracks that they've already released. I love it. Oh, yeah, me too. And I and I was thinking, you know, because I did a podcast on them. The Actually, the first podcast the episode of my new podcast, here, and I talked about that album, and I was talking about how I thought that for the first time in a long time, that Brian Johnson's vocals just sounded so great. And I was wondering if it was because, you know, he had that time off, you know, maybe resting his vocals and everything like that 
And and I know some of it's probably studio magic too at the same time, but he just sounded so great on that record. Yeah. And I said to myself, there's not a, a bad thing I could say about the whole record. I mean, it's just great, you know? I, I think when you have that kind of voice, like I, I did a lot of that raspy stuff in Iced Earth, mm -hmm. and, but not as to that level that he doesn't. I think you definitely need to rest. I think towards the, uh, the end of the ACDC run back in the you know 80s and 90s, I think his voice was definitely starting to show the wear and tear because you can't sing like that every night and tour and, and hold up. I mean, there's some guys, Hansi, you know, Hansi, he can – from Blind Guardian, that dude's got an incredible voice and he sings that kind of raspy, you know, high stuff. But uh, some people just can't do it. It's hard on your voice. It was hard on my voice. And, um, you know, I think the rest probably definitely helped. I mean, you know, you, it's just a vocal cords are like any other muscle. You know, you can overwork them or, you know, you can underwork them, you know, and I think he was just, you know, ACDC was touring a lot and you know and it can definitely get on your voice and and alcohol also you know i know i know it's not like any kind of alcoholic or anything but he drinks and alcohol yeah. def affects your throat you know especially when you're touring and stuff like if you're drinking a lot and smoking or whatever it can really affect your throat on tour or whatever i you know i had a lot of troubles sometimes so you know you just lo live and learn you know about your voice it's just like anything else you got to figure it out. And especially like I wasn't, you know, trained, you know, uh, singer, I kind of just picked it up all on my own. So, you know, I had to learn what's, what you can do and what you can't do. And I'm sure it was probably the same for, for someone like that, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree. And you know, the thing about ACDT is they don't have what you would call ballads or anything like that or any slow songs. So it's not like, he has a chance to really sit back and like, okay, I could kind of take it easy on this song, you know? So right. it's, you know, but I, a question I wanted to ask too, like, um, so what was it like for you um, to basically go on that first world tour um, to see all and go to those places you went? Um, Cause I, I'll be honest with you. I've been out of States one time and that was to Canada and, I only only spend a few days there and there's you know places in the world or in, in at least in this country I want to see some days so I was just wondering how you know what was that like for you well it was it was all pretty pretty cool and crazy you know at the same time it was like we were playing here in Florida and there were some metal clubs rock clubs and stuff that we would play at and you know you you get 100 people or whatever 50 people and you know they if it's, if it's crowded, you consider that a good night. And we had a, you know, decent following here. Uh, and we were, you know, trying to get signed and sending, you know, albums out and demos out everywhere, trying to get signed. And uh, when we finally got signed and we got on that plane and we landed in Germany and it was like, it was like a whole, like, just, surreal situation you're in another country that we had never you know been out of the united states most of us and we're in this other country where not a lot of people speak english uh luckily in germany at least you know at least half of the people speak pretty decent english especially the younger people so we but that first show i just remember uh it was at mock tall in uh in hamburg germany and we walked out on stage and it was like a real crowd. Like this was a concert. It was like, you know, 25, three, 2,500, 3,000 people out there. And they are screaming our name and chanting our name. I stirs, I stirs. And it was like, what is going on here? And then, you know, usually you've been to concerts before the opening act. Usually when they're done, they're done and they just get off the stage. Well, we had play they brought us back out for an encore we were like we didn't know what to do they were cheering you know uh Sukave, or well, what does that mean <laughs> and they're like that means they want you to go back out and play and we're like we're the opening act we're not supposed to do that and you know hansi and the guys are like go out there so we went back out and we played uh you know a few more songs and that's how it went on the rest of the tour it was just like for people to already know our songs, like if you, there's a video out there 
of the tour from 91 on YouTube. There's a, a video circulating around a full concert from that, from Wuppertal, Germany uh, on YouTube right now you can watch and you just see, I mean, the crowd was going crazy and it was just, we were just blown away. We, we, you know, it was like a bunch of kids living their dream, you know? Uh, it was exciting. It was really cool, especially just to be in another country and get to see that we got to see France, you know, Paris, France. We got to see Denmark and Holland and Austria and all these, you know, beautiful Vienna, Austria, just these beautiful places, you know, and it was like it was just so surreal and, and just pretty awesome, man. Nice. Do you do you remember like uh, just out of curiosity, you remember like how many dates y'all played that tour? I think it was like 35 or 40 dates. If I remember. Oh, okay. There was part of the tour that we did with Blind Guardian uh, in Germany and uh, Austria and stuff. And then we did part of the tour um, on as a headline act um, with some support acts in some of the smaller countries. Uh, uh, so we uh, we got to branch off a little bit. So I think it was like 35 or 40 dates. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know um, I had heard here recently that uh, I think John mentioned that Stu has played more shows in I Surf than any other singer or any other lineup in the band, I think, pretty oh, much. I believe it. I believe it. They, yeah. do, they did a lot of touring, you know, uh, back, you know, the dystopia and all that stuff. And, and they did a lot of touring. So, uh, you know that was the peak of their touring when, when Matt left and, and Ripper left and then Stu came in, that was the peak. I think the height of their really when they were touring the most, you know, and I, I don't know yeah. how long Stu's been in the band, but he's been in the band quite a while now. I don't, I'm not up on when he joined the band or whatever, but I know he's been in the band a long time. And, you know, I think as, touring slows down for ice earth in general because of COVID and stuff, you know, um, they're probably, you know, yeah. But, uh, up until probably the incorruptible album, they were pretty busy. Yeah. Oh, and I was going to ask you too, do you think, um, now going forward that do you think COVID is going to change the way, uh, concerts are done? I mean, I hope in, that we get on the backside of this here soon and, you know, or whatever, but I still think that maybe there'll, there'll probably be some kind of changes made going forward. Yeah. I, I just think, you know, it's all how this goes with this vaccine and all that stuff. Like there's, you know, I've heard stuff that the people are getting sick from the vaccine. I've heard a lot of reports of that. And so, you know, it just all depends going forward, how all that works out. And I'm, um, Different countries, I think, are going to have different restrictions, just like here in the United States. Different states are going to like right now they're starting concerts in Florida already. You can come to a concert, you know, uh, socially distant. You know, they only allow like partial crowd in and, you know, everyone wears a mask or whatever. But so it just I just depend. I think it's going to take a while. Uh, bef I don't know if it'll. It would be great to think that it's going to be back like it was, you know, and like well, yeah. I, was watch I was watching. I was watching some highlights of the playoff football games and, and they were showing the old from two, three years ago or even last year. And, you know, there's 80,000 people packed in an arena. It would be nice to say, Oh boy, I can't wait. Maybe next year it'll be like that. But I don't know, man. It just, I think the direction we're going in the world and in this country, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen. It just seems very, up in the air. Maybe that's a good word <laughs> for it. it yeah. Good. I'm not looking ahead like <laughs> a big uh, <laughs> hope of any good things happening, you know, uh, in, in a large, quick manner. Yeah, I I, def I definitely agree. Um, you know, I have noticed here lately that, um, you know, I, um, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big supporter of like independent, like, you know, artists and, movie makers and, and everything like that. And John Snyder, I, I'm pretty sure you know who that is, but yeah. um, anyway, he was, he put out a movie here just a little while back and he was actually doing drive-in concerts or drive-in movie theaters where you would pay one price and it was for a carload of people. 
and you would go to the movie and he would also do a concert all at the same time, you know? So I think yeah. that was pretty cool and just an innovative way to not only, you know, get people out to enjoy, but a safe way to do it. And, um, you know, I, I'm just going to be honest, you know, there's a lot of things I've wanted to do this year or this past year. And I'm just like, man, COVID is just like, put a damper on everything. And I just, I did, if, if I got a chance to go to a concert, I don't care if there's 10 people there, you know, I would, I would love it, you know, just to hear some live music for a change. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want everyone to move to Florida, so I'm not going to speak too much on it, but <laughs> you know, most we're in let what they call phase three or whatever here. So, you know, most of the bars and stuff, restaurants are all open and we my new band, Jacob's Well, we play out, you know, a lot, uh, you know, so thankfully here in Florida so far, I say, you know, I don't want to jinx it or anything. Things are, you know, pretty good here, but, you know, we've done, I've seen a lot of bands are doing those drive through concerts at the drive-in movie theaters. We've had that, several bands do that here. So, yeah, I think it's just going to look different, you know. Uh, like I said, I think it's going to be state by state, you know, like, if you go to California, I mean, even just I, I, I like football, so I, I relate some things to football, especially right now with all the football that's going on. You look at some stadiums, they don't let anybody in. And then some stadiums, you know, they let 6,000 people in. And then some stadiums, they let 12,000 people in. So I think it's just going to be like country by country, state by state. I, I don't see yeah. a big change in 2021. Uh, if the vaccine was like, you know, a hundred percent, but I, I just don't think it's going the way, you know, they think it's going to go with that. I don't think a lot of people, there's going to be people that don't want to take it. And then there's, there's already, I mean, I've seen many reports of people that are getting sick and stuff and, you know, different reactions to it. So I, I think it just, it might've been a little rushed. That's just my opinion though. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. So don't don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm just a dude. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> hey, well, you know, I I agree with you, and that's fair, and that's your opinion, and, and you're entitled to it. And and that, and that, you know, I had a uh, cousin actually just took the vaccine here a few days ago, and she said the first shot went great, and then she said when she got the second shot, that was when she kind of um, experienced like some chills, a little bit of fever, and everything. She said it lasted about 24 hours, maybe 36 at the most. And she said after that, she was fine. And she was, she was telling me, cause she, um, she's a nurse herself. And she was telling me that, um, that that's usually what's happening to most people. Like they'll take the first shot and the first shot, you don't have any effects on them and anything. And then the second shot is usually when you might get like a little bit of like a fever or cold, you know, whatever COVID does or whatever. And it doesn't last long and then it goes away. So if, you know, hopefully that'll be the thing that, um, that'll work out for everybody. I know not everybody, you know, it's going to, it's going to work for everybody. I think cause you know, different, everybody's made up differently and depending on your health and everything, you know? So, but if more cases are like that, maybe there is a hope on a horizon somewhere, you know? Yeah, I mean, it would be great to see, you know, concerts. I mean, because, you know, the the entertainment bit, uh, industry has been hit the worst. I mean, musicians, I mean, I have a full-time job. I'm not a full-time musician as far as for my, you know, living. But there's, you know, they've been affected the worst. I mean, if you think about it, you know, it's like restaurants and, and bars have been affected, but musicians were the first ones, you know, out it's like you know the, the concerts are over i'm gonna keep my club open but i'm not gonna have bands you know i'm just doing takeout or whatever so musicians were like you know the first ones affected so it would be nice because i have a lot of friends that are professional musicians that's all they do for to make their living so it would be nice to see you know at least even if it was three quarters or half of what it used to be it would be nice to see you know concerts again all over the world bands be able to go on tour again, you know, and, and that would be really great to see. Yeah, it would. And like I said, you know, the, the music industry is really taking a hit and, you know, um, I've in, when you're a smaller band, like, I mean, you know, a band like Metallica or something, maybe it doesn't affect them as much as it would, you know, some of the smaller bands and everything, right. but you know, 
there's a lot of bands really taking a hit right now. And well, even I guess bands like Earth, you know, yeah, they make their money by supporting their album. They go out on tour and they sell merchandise and stuff like that. You know, that's how they make their most money. You know, uh, it costs a lot of money to put out an album and streaming sucks. You don't make anything. You make pennies for streaming, yep. you know, I mean, uh, and they make their money by, you know, going out on tour and selling merch and all that stuff and supporting their album and getting the word out there. And, and, you know, when you can't tour, it, it's, it's tough. It takes a toll. I know that, you know, it's taken a toll on, you know, like you say, smaller bands, you know, even, uh, you know, bands that maybe aren't top tier, you know, maybe second tier bands like Iced Earth or whatever that, you know, like you said, Metallica, they're probably set for life, you know, but I heard they're putting out a new album too. Um, yeah. But you know, the second tier bands, you know, I think that's where it's going to start. You'll see those kind of bands, it's hurting them because those second tier bands are the ones that rely on touring, you know, like, uh, you know, they can't just sell an album on their name, you know, um, and survive off of it. Yeah. And like I say, we're in the day and age where, and I hate to say this cause I'm an old school guy, but when you're seeing, you know, physical media is starting to phase its way out. And luckily yeah. there is a kind of a vinyl resurgence, you know, um, people, you know, you either have to go to these like places like Spotify or Apple music or whatever to get, Everything because I know, like, my Walmart here just a little while back quit selling CDs altogether. They still have a you know a decent vinyl collection, but right. of course, that's the way I like them. We'll listen to music anyway, but um, you know, and so it, it makes it harder to find stuff. And like I said, you go on and, and you know, I try to support a band the best way I can. You know, if I can buy the physical, that's what I want. But if I have to go to somewhere like iTunes or somewhere like that, I will go and, and purchase it. And I, and I know the artists don't make a lot of money from that. But, you know, it just it just it, I as being an independent um, artist myself, you know, writing books and everything. It's it's hard to, you know, when you're only making you know just a little bit of money off your work. And I don't really do it for the money anyway. I do it because I love what I do. But. Right. You know, those streaming services and stuff like that, man, you know, they're taking advantage of the artists. And like I said, in a time like this, it's just I feel bad for a lot of the bands and even the top tier bands. You know, it's, right. you know, I, I wish I mean, you know, a lot of people gave Lars Ulrich um, hell for what he done standing up the Napster. But, you know, you look at it now. Um, right. Maybe a lot of more people should have, you know, <laughs> people should have listened to what he said and not given him a hard time because, you know, back then when that all started out, I don't think anybody had a clue what it was going to grow into, you know, uh, you know, like when he made those remarks and, you know, I think that was in the late nineties or, you know, mid nineties, whenever that was, there was no cell phones. There was no YouTube, you know, there was just MTV and that was it. Yep. Nobody, you know, had a clue what it was going to come to, you know, we were still, you know, we were still listening. CDs were the, you know, hottest thing back then, you know, and then the music sites started coming up and Napster and those kind of things. And nobody really, or at least guys like me didn't think it was going to be, you know, just the beginning of the future and the end to the, really the end to the industry. Thank, like you said, thank God vinyl is making such a big comeback because at least now you still have some kind of physical property to sell. There's still people love and people still like CDs, you know, and, but man, vinyl people like collect vinyl now and people like to listen on vinyl, which is another thing I was watching a documentary about, um, you know, a lot of people now are satisfied to listen to music on their phone or on their device, whatever it is, you know, through some earbuds, so the quality is like, whatever, it, it doesn't have to be great. It just has to be good enough. You know, the gone are the days or now they're back because of vinyl. But back in the, you know, the days when I was in iced earth, 
you had to go into these big studios and spend a lot of money to get a sound that someone could put on their system at home and listen to over and over and over again, you know, because people used to sit and listen to albums or listen to CDs. And now, you know, they could take it on the go, you know, so a lot of the studios shut down and stuff, but, you know, definitely um, vinyl, I think, making its resurgent is really a good thing for the music industry. So I hope that trend stays because I've never seen so many people so excited about having a turntable. Like <laughs> I've, if I could have back the turntables I got rid of in my life, I'd be like rich. I could sell them for so much money now. <laughs> you know, I had these, techniques and pioneer and these you know back then they were like 150 bucks or whatever now you could sell them for like a thousand dollars you know yeah. so yeah you know uh it's a good thing it's definitely a good thing having to be able to sell physical you know merchandise like that is great you know and uh help the music especially metal be yeah Lost the well, you know, I noticed. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm here. Yeah. Um, sometimes yeah, like my metal, internet's a little glitchy. <laughs> yeah, metal people love to collect. Like just the people. On as a pod. Yeah. Collectors, you know, they collect. So uh, I think the. I think it might be my internet. <laughs> no, I actually think it's mine. Yeah, I'm here. Um, mine has uh, it has a ten, it has a mind of its own sometimes, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I might be using an extender. Um, I actually um, I'm living in a tiny house right now, um, and uh, I'm using going off my parents' internet and everything, and I have an extender. It usually works pretty good, but once time when their internet kind of dips, mine dips a little bit too. So, uh -oh. yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, and, and talking about that, though, it's funny. I um, If you notice nowadays, you see these people out wearing those holy jeans or whatever it is with the jeans with the holes in them. And right. that's a thing now. And you can actually buy them in the store. And I was joking, you know, back here a little while back. I said, man, if I'd have kept all my jeans from back in the day that had holes in them, man, I'd be a rich guy, you know. <laughs> right. And now they sell concert shirts at, at tar Target. You know, yep. we used to buy concert shirts and, you know, keep them for years and years. Now you go to Target and get a Led Zeppelin shirt or a Metallica shirt or whatever. You know, they sell them there. You know, the style's back in. So, you know, whatever you got that you think is out of date, just hold on to it. <laughs> oh, I know, right? You never yep. know. <laughs> you don't. Not in, not in today's age, man. I'll That's you, right. You know, I just wanted to say, and like with uh, um, MP3s and stuff like that, and maybe this is the wrong thing to say, but I just think that like MP3s and stuff like that, they're just compressed and so much that, you know, when you download them and you get them and like you say, you listen to them through a pair of earbuds or on your phone or anything, you know, if you're not wanting to get the dynamics and the song and what the song sounds like, then I kind of get a point of then what's the use of listening to, it, you know? Well, you know, I think that's the thing that makes today's society so different you know it's a much more on the go on you know everything's in your on your phone now you know what i mean uh music in it's hit music i mean i think like we said with the vinyl it, it's helped a lot but i think people are just you know they've got their phone they've got their music they've got their everything on there and you know why do i need to sit home and listen to an album i don't think people sit home and just listen to music. When I was growing up, and maybe this makes me sound old, but I am old. So <laughs> we used to listen <laughs> to music. You know what I mean? We would sit and just listen to an album or five albums or, you know, whatever, and just listen to it. And, you know, with headphones or just through the speakers. Like I had, you know, giant pioneer 100 watt speakers, you know, and, you know, uh, because we wanted to hear every little nook and essence of the music you know every cowbell hit and every bell and every you know guitar lick and every sound effect 
And that's what people did in studios. And I, that, I said that documentary I watched was people that own studios. Now they're saying, you know, nobody is going to pay to come to a studio anymore because they can just record their album and their, you know, their little home studio on their computer. And that's another thing that, you know, is taken over too, is, uh, you know, bands that want to have a nice, huge sounding album, they have to spend money to go to the studio, but people are just putting out albums left and right. So it also kills the music as far as quality. You know, there's a lot of bands out there that just put out albums, you know, and there's just so much flood of music out there. Everything just kind of jumbles together now, I think. Yep. Well, you know, I um, I, I look at it as MP3s are uh, two things. Are, they're convenient because this is the age, uh, age of convenience. And, you know, like I said, I mean, you can put a, a 10,000 songs on a, you know, a little flash drive or something and right. take it somewhere and listen to it or plug it into your, your VCR or your, oh, uh, God, I'm so deep, my, your DVD player or something like that. Or even, right. you know, if you got a laptop or something, you know, and, but, I've always said sometimes though stuff like it doesn't always make it great either, you know. That's why I'm right. glad like in Jacob's Will, y'all guys are still putting out CDs and everything, and even though you're a small independent band, I just yeah. I think that's awesome, you know. Well, we try to make you know we make a hundred CDs, and then if we sell those, we can always reorder more, you know. But it's I feel like a lot of people like even if they don't listen to it, like people like to have something physical to look at and, you know, it's got the lyrics on it and it, like people like to hold something, you know, people like to hold and look at stuff while they're listening to music. You know, I think, I think there's still a market for that. So we have stuck to that, you know, uh, just making some C's, you know, we don't order a thousand or 10,000, you know, those days when you could order, you know, 5,000 CDs and sell them are over unless you're a mainstream band. We're just an independent band. And most people are just satisfied to go on, you know, YouTube or Spotify or whatever they have and listen to our music. And that's fine. And we, you know, get a lot of streaming that way, but there are still a lot of people that want it CDs. So we just buy them a hundred at a time. We sell a hundred, we order a hundred more and that way we're not into it and we don't have a bunch of them sitting around and the, you know, the cost is reasonable enough for a hundred that it's, it's not a problem to do it. And that, that's another thing now that's kind of cool is there's a lot of services, you know, CD baby and we use TuneCore. that, wow. It's like they offer this, so much stuff. Like we TuneCore, you, you pay a yearly fee you can design your own CD right there on their website. They print them out. They do the covers. They wrap the covers. They ship them to you. They put your music up on all the streaming sites. You can pay extra and have advertisement. It's like, wow, this is like, it's so, so nice. It's like, you know, back in the day when I was in Iced Earth, it was like you had to make demo tapes and mail them to all the record companies and stuff to, you know, get your music heard and, we must have got 10 million rejection albums when we were Purgatory and Ice Earth when we first started out. You know, like we'd mail out all these CDs or mostly cassette tapes that we made, you know, like on a jam box, you know, like and that were horrible. They were just terrible. Uh, and we, we actually sent them to record companies. You know, we were young. We didn't. We just wanted to get signed. We were hungry. And then as the band went on, we were able to, you know, get into the studio and, save up some money and we, you know, we were working, we would put our money together and try to, you know, make a decent product. And, you know, so it did pay off, you know, in the long run, but yeah, I think now it's much better as far as for independent bands uh, to get their music out there. Like I said, I think it's a lot easier now and there's a lot more services out there that uh, to help out with that. So I think that part is good anyway. Like it's been a blessing for us and, with uh, Jacob Swell to be able to, you know, have one place we can do a full service, you know. Nice. So that's good. Yeah, it's it's good to have something like that. That way you, you know, that saves all that work on you guys too, you know. So yeah, and so that that that's actually great. Um, because I had thought about um maybe doing another uh poetry CD and and everything and and um maybe. 
that might be something I might actually look into or whatever. So yeah, that's pretty cool. There's several sites. TuneCore is the one we use, but there's others. CD yeah. Baby, there's a bunch. So, oh, nice. So, um, I, I wanted to ask. So, going back and and uh, you know, now listening to the remix remastered version of the album, um, how much? I mean. Because I know you were there and, and you experienced because you, you were there singing on the album and everything. But um, looking back on it now and listening to the, how much like just uh, how I want to how I want to wear this with with the remix and remastered, um, like just listening to this one now and listen to them. How much difference do you really can you notice in the album from when? The original one to now well the, the, that's a good question the the original one like i remember when it first when i first heard it like we recorded it and then we sat down at you know uh john's apartment and we put it on and we listened to it i remember being kind of disappointed um the the drums were not really very good sounding and the bass you could not hear the bass at all and the vocals were kind of dry sounding and in the background and you know that's nobody's fault it's just we didn't have the money and we didn't really know you know if you look at the albums john does now his ear for you know mixing and producing now you know i've watched him you know now how he sits in front of the console, you know, while they're mixing it and he hears things that I don't even hear. He's like, that one snare hit there was not, you know, as loud as that other snare. I mean, he hears stuff that, you know, that I wouldn't even notice was wrong with the song. But back then, you know, we were just getting started. So now when I hear what Zeus, especially, you know, Zeus is the guy that did. So he took the original two inch reel to reel tape from Morris sound studio and remixed and remastered from those original two inch master tapes. And there's certain things that you can't fix like the, so I don't know if this is something that might be just technical talk, but the drums were already like, so there's, if there's 15 different drum tracks, there's the bass drum, the kick drum, the snare drum, the cymbal, all that stuff it all gets dumped down onto just, you know, one thing. So here's your drums versus when it's recorded, they record each thing with a separate microphone and then they, okay, we're satisfied with that. So the drums couldn't be changed a lot. So what I think he did with the drums just is amazing. I mean, the kick drum, yeah. so much better, the snare, you can hear it, you know, I mean, it just so much better. And the bass, I mean, just so much better. And the, I think the level of the vocals is better now. Um, and, you know, I noticed you put like a little bit more effects on the vocals, whatever. Um, so I think overall, like, you know, the guitar always sounded really heavy, but now I think it has even more crunch. I think overall it just sounds more, uh, just sounds fresh. It's just fresh. It's, it's not that much different as far as like, oh my gosh, this is a whole different thing. It just sounds better. It just sounds fresh and it sounds more modern. And you can tell that it, you know, it's been gone through and, and it just has a really good fresh sound. I think Zeus and, you know, he did a great job on it. He's, you know, I mean, he's a master. So um, he did a great job of something that's hard to do. It wasn't like those were digital tracks and he could, you know, go in and put them up, you know, boot them up on his computer and, you know, start cutting and pasting and mixing it. This is a two inch reel to reel from 1989, you know, that he's working with. So I think he did an amazing job and I think it sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I do too. And like, I noticed like, especially in the vocals and everything, it's just, it, it has a lot more punch to it. And it just, yeah. you know, the album just, especially the CD version, it just, you know, grabs you and it just like, kicks you and it's like oh yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> and i haven't had the chance to listen to the vinyl version of it yet right. but um you know definitely when that gets here i'm gonna crank that bad boy up and listen to it because you know i just i want to hear what it sounds like on vinyl 
Right. I know the CD sounds great, so. Yeah, it definitely, definitely sounds good. So I'm very happy and it's great to have been asked to be a part of it. You know, I mean, he could have put it out. John could have put it out and not contacted me or, you know, whatever. But it's great that we're in, we're friends again and we're able to do stuff and I'm able to be part of it. it, it it's really cool that, you know, after 30 something years, you know, that we can still have a friendship you know, and I'm, I'm happy for that. And it's nice to, you know, to be a part of it and, and get to uh, see it, like all this stuff unfold. It's cool. And I, I just hope, uh, I hope that there'll be more stuff down the road. I hope maybe there'll be uh, some more purgatory stuff. Uh, the purgatory EP was one of the funnest things I've ever done as far as a musician, as far as a songwriter and, and singer to be able to be part of that project. I mean, it was just, those songs were like dear, near and dear to my heart. I mean, all of our hearts, John too, and Bill and, and, and you know, even Greg and, and all that were, you know, involved in whatever form or fashion. And to hear them finally, like we imagined them sounding all those years ago is just awesome. Like, you know, we knew what they could be, but we just didn't have the money or the technology or the talent or whatever back then to do it. And to hear it now come to be what it is, I just think that EP is just amazing. And uh, I, I, I can just keep listening to it all the time. It never gets old. <laughs> I think it's Jason was one of the most favorite songs I've ever written. You know, just the, the way the music and the vocals came together, John, you know, we just were gelling. That was a time when we were just writing songs together and we were just gelling. We were just like, we were feeling each other, you know, it was, it was really cool time. Nice. Well, you know, um, I love, I love that EP and uh, I'm just going to tell you, man, your version of Dracula, man, it just, Oh my, I love how you do that in that song. And it just, you know, it gives you, it's almost like it gives you like a different take on Dracula. You know, it's funny. I was telling somebody here the other day that um, I'm actually um, writing a version of Dracula that I think has never been done before. And it's kind of um, it's a really weird twist, a really weird twist on who Dracula is. You know, and, and, and the funny thing about it is, and like I said, so when I listen to that song, I'm like, wow, it just it just it's just great. And I can't, you know, and like another thing, there's nothing bad about the EP at all. I just, I love those songs and I kind of wish there was a full length album of that. And hopefully maybe someday they will be, maybe you know, someday. you know, yep. we've talked about it and I know John's mentioned it on, on a couple interviews that, you know, he might look into that. So we'll just see what happens going forward. It's, uh, you know, this, just right now, everything is just so up in the air with just the times we're in. So, but I'm hoping for it and it'd be really great. I know, uh, I know he enjoyed it doing it too. So, um, so hopefully down the road, that'll happen. Awesome. Um, I, w I wanted to ask you about one of the songs on the album, um, Funeral. Um, is that actually considered an instrumental or is that just a song that just has like one verse in it? I think it's just an instrumental. I think uh, John added that in. Um, you know, you, that's probably a question you could ask him because I'm not sure. It's been so long. Um, it may have, you know, been about his friend that died, that he named it, you know, the Van Iced Earth because his friend that passed away in a motorcycle accident. Uh, I think that line that he said in there, the, those words he said was uh, somewhat of a tribute to that guy. I don't know for sure. I could be wrong. Um, it's been 30 years since that song was recorded and I, yeah. haven't talked, I haven't talked to John about it lately. So, but I think that's why he put those, that verse in there was just like a tribute to that guy. I'm pretty sure. I think that's what that song is about. So, so I'm not sure. Yeah. So, exactly. Oh, awesome. Cool. And, you know, I wanted to say like your version of uh, written on um, and something I want to ask you, too, about written on the walls. I know you I think I remember you saying that you wrote that song acoustically. Um, when you recorded the album and when you recorded that song, did it come out the way you envisioned the song 
uh, you know, in your mind the whole time or, or is it kind of different? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, we were playing that song for quite a while. I mean, we were had written I had written that song on the acoustic guitar and I played it for John one day at his apartment. We lived in the same apartment complex and I went over and, hey, check out this song. And he liked the lyrics uh, and he liked that acoustic part in the middle, you know, the Armageddon town life is gone. You knew it was the way was the part that we actually kept from the acoustic song that I had written. And then him and Randy just, you know, put that Dave too. uh, They all just put in parts and it just became an incredible song. And to me, the music on that song is just like my favorite part. It it just has to be that last little verse at the end, man, that riff at the end. Uh, I like the whole song, but just it's got so many different parts in it like the you know the verse riff and the just such a great yeah Uh, so i'm pretty happy even though cool song uh it's a great song. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, like I said, you have an uh, acoustic version of it on, on YouTube. You think maybe that'll ever uh, find its way onto a Jacob's Well project? Uh, uh, a Purgatory album, if there's ever one, it might. We've talked about maybe doing something with that. Oh, okay. Cool. Nice. That's awesome. Um, are, are they where? Where? I'm sorry. What's I, I that? Think, I think it cut out there for a second there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, going, um, going back and um, listening to, um, I guess the, the album. Are they song? Are you? Are there songs that you wish that maybe would have made the debut that um that didn't make it. I know probably John had probably the most influence on all that, you know? Yeah. There's lots of songs that we had at the time. We had some great songs. And um, as far as I think it is what it is and it was what it was meant to be. I, I, I some songs that I wish would have made it on there that didn't, but the songs that are on there are fan- fantastic. And I think, like you said, by that time, uh, most of that, those decisions were being made by John and, you know, that was something we all accepted. So it, it is what it is. Those songs were meant to be on there and they're on there. And, and uh, I like the album the way it is. So. Well, yeah, I do too. I was, you know, just want to, cause you know, back in, you know, you look, I say, 30 years ago. And I guess that's the nature with anything. You look back hindsight 2020 and you think about, Oh, well, you know, what if we would have done this or done that? But right. when you look back now, I actually honestly think, Hey, you know, it's a great album and maybe, you know, it was the right songs, the right time, I you know? And so, so I that's what I, makes it great. <laughs> I, I think John, you know, at that time really took over the leadership. I mean, of the band more. And I think he really, he's always been really uh, focused and driven on the, on that, as far as the direction of where he was going. So I, there weren't a lot of reasons to question it. Like it was going the direction we wanted to go. We were going in the right way. If we were going the wrong direction, then I think people would have been like, Hey, what are you doing? But we were headed the right direction. So I think everybody was like, Hey, he seems to, you know, know what he's doing and uh so we just supported him and you know uh we went in that direction full bore you know a hundred percent to uh try to get the ultimate goal was to get a record label and you know get signed and get out there because like i said nowadays you don't really need a record label because you know you can pretty much do it all yourself but back then if you wanted to make it you had to sign an album contract and get with the you know that was the only way really there wasn't the the market yeah and- music as there is now and i think um i think um nowadays 
it's a good thing, but it's I, I think sometimes maybe it's a bad thing because that allows you sometimes just to put out anything, you know, and maybe that's not a good thing. But, you know, I guess I mean, I guess the freedom, I guess, and all that. I mean, if it's good, if it's good stuff, you'll tell and, and it'll do something. But, yeah. you know, um, I, I just know that there's a lot of people out here putting out stuff and I'm like. I'm glad I still got the old the old stuff to listen to, you know. Hopefully, people don't think, feel that way about Jake as well. So hopefully, they like it. Uh, we try to pick songs that we feel are pretty decent. I hope uh, people don't feel like you know, oh gosh, here's another band trying to put out a you know album or whatever. But so I don't know. It's it's tough to know if your stuff is any good. You know, <laughs> record labels were a good judge oh, yeah. of that. Yes. Back in the day, they would say, hey, if you're no good, you're not going to get signed, you know, so maybe, you know, that was a good uh, watermark for a band back in the day. Yeah. Well, I just want to say, I think all your your stuff in Jacob's Well is great, and uh, you, you definitely have gone down the right path, and, you know, I love the way, you know, y'all do everything, and the music is great, and it just, you know, I love it, and I just lo- um I try to be a big, uh, big fan of all different types of music, all different styles. And I grew up in a home where, you know, you had ACDC coming from one end of the house, and you had like stuff like the old outlaw country with like Waylon and Willie and guys like that. And then my brother was over here listening to stuff like Metallica, and so it was all like ingrained in my mind and. I listen to so much different stuff and it's like, but I enjoy, I enjoy that kind of thing. I know like some people, they, they like to stick to a genre and that's it. And I'm like, I think you're selling yourself short, you know? And that's what I like about our music is it's just on one album. There's several different genres of music, you know, Uh, Jamie writes more, uh, I wouldn't say country, but like Appalachian uh, bluegrass rock kind of a sound. And I write more like, uh, I kind of more alternative rock folk sound. So it, it's got a lot of different stuff on it. And uh, it, it definitely shows our different influences. And I think that's what makes it different. You can't really stick it into one category. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that's a good thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think it so, is. Yep. Oh yeah. Most definitely. Um, so I, w- I wanted to ask you too. What do you think about the uh, the new artwork for the, the vinyl release of the of the album? <laughs> That's a good question. I like the front cover. <laughs> I think the <clears throat> I think the new redraw on the front cover is great. I'm not sure about the back, the where our picture is on the back. Mm-hmm. The, it kind of looks cartoonish. I got to get used to it. I'm used to the original picture on the back with the flames in the background. It's kind of like my favorite picture of us as a group, uh, the picture that was on the back of the first album. But I definitely love the redraw on the front cover. I think, uh, you know, it's enough, close enough to the original, but it's just like sharper and cooler and it has like more detail you know i always thought it's like a great tattoo that picture is just like a, the colors in it and everything so i i love it i think the they did a great job you know on it Definitely. oh i do too yeah i haven't had a chance to see the uh the back part of the album or whatever so it's, it's i have to enormous. check that out it's like the same picture but they've like cartooned it up a little bit and it just it's i have to get used to it it's like our hair looks a little like i don't know it's weird. <laughs> if you get to oh, see okay. it album you'll know what i'm talking about i mean it's not bad it's just different and i i'm not i wasn't expecting it but i love the front cover for sure i saw that you know back before when john first started working on it he sent me an advanced picture of it to see what i thought and you know so i've seen it for a while and i was just like blown away by it the first time i saw it you know so i'm i'm really happy with it i think it looks great i love the original but i love the redraw just is more like uh, just like the detail on it, just like the end of the realm uh, cover, that whole redesign of that. They did such a great job on that, you know. So I think John surrounds himself with good people, always talented, uh, very talented people. Oh yeah, yep. 
Yeah, I, I've noticed that. Like I said, with the artwork on the last three projects that he's been, you know, you've been a part of, it's just been amazing. And you know, and I, you know, and like I always said, I, I always believe that artwork helps sell on <laughs> helps sells an album, and oh, pretty definitely. much that's what got me in the ice surf. You know. Yeah, they've always had great artwork for sure. Oh yeah. So um, let's see. I think that's about all I really wanted to know about the first album and everything. So I did notice um, that uh, you had gone out to Colorado recently. How was that experience? Well, you know, we were kind of uh, a little leery about travel, you know, with the whole COVID thing. You know, I'm not I'm not too big on the mask thing. So I try to stay home just pretty much as much as I can. I mean, I go out and do shows and stuff, but so the thought of getting on a plane and traveling and just that whole thing was kind of overwhelming, but we felt like it was at a time when it was pretty safe. So we, we flew to uh, Colorado to Grand Junction, Colorado, and we drove out to Moab, Utah and spent a few days in Moab hiking and stuff. We like me and my wife like to hike. And then we drove uh, to uh, Uray, Colorado, um, out Silverton and Durango and Uray and just went out there and it was just did a lot of hiking and just, it was just awesome. It was a great trip. And, uh, we met, you know, a lot of, a lot of people from were traveling too at that time. It was, uh, when the COVID cases were at a, a lower point. So a lot of people yeah. were getting out and, uh, it was, it was great. It was a great trip and I was glad we did it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was good to get away and just, get back out there i love it out west in the mountains nice yeah i've been telling myself i want to go out west sometime i've always wanted to go out to uh, wyoming to uh, frontier days out there and uh, check out some other places maybe go to yellowstone and right and all that good stuff and i had a, a grandfather um who used to be a, a mechanic for a uh, paving and grading company and they had done a, a project out in montana and I want to say it was like eight, the late nineties, early two thousands. And um, he had brought me some pictures back out there and just stunning, you know, pictures that just take your breath away from the landscape, you know, and it's just, Oh my God. So I, and you know, hopefully one of these days I'll actually make it out there and get to see some of the scenes because it's beautiful. Okay. I know it is. Okay. It's uh, beautiful. Yeah. And I noticed, I noticed you do a lot of fishing too. Yeah, I like, I'm an outdoors kind of guy, man. I, like I said, I like, if I can be outside doing stuff, um, I go fishing on the weekends, uh, usually all the time. Um, we like to go hiking and bike riding and we just like to get out. I, I'm not, a, you know, I like always have been an outdoors kind of guy. So love fishing. Not awesome. So, um, you, have you been like that way your whole life or is that something that you more got into as you got older? I think growing up in Florida, you know, you get like, love the outdoors. It just, it's an outdoor kind of state. Um, yeah. Always been into fishing growing up. We always went fishing, you know, especially in Tampa where I grew up the, you know, there's so many, uh, just the Bay and the Gulf and it's just like, there's just water everywhere and lakes and it's just a, thing so I always grew up fishing and and then when I got older and I was able to travel more uh like when I got married we just started going out west we just we got we got married at the Grand Canyon and then traveled to Colorado and then we loved all that out there so much we just go back whenever we get the chance so it's beautiful we love North Carolina too um it's beautiful there in Tennessee and North Carolina up in the mountains it's just beautiful so yeah, it is. Um, I used to go to the mountains a lot when I was a kid. We used to go up to uh, Chimney Rock and a few other yeah. places up there. Um, one of our family members used to have a cabin up there and everything. So we'd go up there and sometimes spend a week or so. It, during, usually it would be after we'd get out of school for the summer or whatever. And right. I haven't been back in probably, oh, God, probably 20 years or more. But um, I yeah, got to go, go back. I got, what's that? We go to Sliding Rock in North Carolina. No, I don't think I've ever been there. It's just like this big rock, and you 
it's got water rushing over the top of it, just like a thin little film of water, and you just slide right down it into this big pool of water. It's a big thing in North Carolina. I thought you might have gone there. It's cool. Oh, no, no. I'd have to check that out then. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny, and just throwing something kind of out of the left field. There's actually, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, there's actually a bat cave, North Carolina. Oh, no, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it's funny. They actually have like the post office actually has like a big like Batman sign on or whatever. It's pretty funny, but you know, I guess it's because there's I guess there's like an active bat cave there or something. And so it, it's pretty funny. I found that on the internet looking up something here a little while back, but I was like, that that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, when I lived in uh, New York, um, I did a lot of fishing up in the, um, the Finger Lakes there. And um, once, in a, once in a while, I got a chance to go out to Fairhaven Beach there. It's right off, the, um, right off of uh, Lake Ontario there. And, uh, man, it was, it was like great fishing out there. And I know they – I think they still do, but I know they used to do charter fishing. You can go out and catch salmon and everything. And, uh, man, I was like – I always wanted to do that and never got a chance to it, but hopefully maybe someday I'll get to go back and that would be an, an awesome experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like we got a little family pond here that we can fish in once in a while, but it's, it's nothing like going out and like going to the lake or the river or something and, you know, just yeah. spending a day out on a boat and fishing, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh Yeah. I tell you what, sure makes a lot of the uh, a lot of the things in the world go away. That's for sure. Or is that's why I think I do it fish so much. Yeah, just, I like to just go where there nobody else is and just spend you know an hour or two out there, and it's just it's just just a chance to get your thoughts together and and you know get away from all the craziness and you know just be with nature and and just all that stuff. It's all it's just really it's a good way to start my day. Anyways, I like to start it that way. Nice. Awesome. Well, you know, that's, it's good that they know that you find something that, you know, you love to do. And I mean, you know, being, being in the outdoors is, I think a serenity for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I try, I try to find, you know, try to spend as much time as I can outdoors, but you know, when the weather has no idea what it wants to do, sometimes you just have to, you know, you have to weather the storm, I guess, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was kind of, um, um, I know my sister went somewhere yes, uh, this weekend um, in North Carolina, and they, some kind of thing where you get on this tube and you like slide down this big giant hill or whatever. And um, she, she went there and took the, uh, um, her kids and, um, you know, one of our uh, my cousins went with them and everything, and she was posting some pictures online and everything, and some videos. That looked pretty cool. And I was like, man, you'd just be surprised at what you know you have around these areas just to go do. And you know, right. people chose not to, and 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 I really don't understand why. You know, you just got to get out and do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. It's all right. If I uh, show this on the. This talk about iced earth. This sure, new, you can. The new Jacob's Well album and uh, 12 songs on there. And it's like I said, it's kind of um, folk rock country alternative, if that's a musical uh, genre. And uh, <laughs> it's all digital. It's everywhere. Uh, Spotify, you know, iTunes, all YouTube, all that stuff. And if you want to order it, um, maybe you could put a link um, at the thing for me. That'd be great. I will. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's out there. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of the songs are about the mountains and about Jamie, the guy that uh, I'm in the band with. He writes a lot about the mountains and stuff. He loves North Carolina as well. And this picture on here on the front, is actually from uh, Colorado. It's a waterfall on one of my favorite hikes that we've done a couple times. Uh, so uh, we use that for the cover. So yeah, the, the outdoors is a big part of my life. So yeah. Nice. Well, anytime you ever on with me, whether if we do an interview in the past, if you want to plug something, you're more than welcome to anytime. Uh, I try to help out as much as I can. And 
support the band and because I just love the music, you know. Thank so. you very much. Your CD oh, should, yeah. be, should be there uh, today. Now, do you want to tell the people what why this CD is so special to you, or is that something you want to do at another time? Um, we may actually, if it's cool and, and you got time later on, maybe I'll have you and Jamie both come on. And yeah. if he if he can do it, and um, we'll just talk about Jacob's Well, the album and whole, and and I and I'll tell everybody then or whatever. Awesome, man. Awesome. So it, and it's um, been great. I'm with you. I gotta I gotta wrap it up though. If you all right. Mind. No, no. I I I was fixing to say I was wondering if you, you know how much time you had had and everything, and um, I just want to say I'm forever grateful and uh, giving me this opportunity and um. You know, I've been a big fan for a long time and just wanted to, you know, have a com more of a comment. It, to me, it seemed more like a conversation than an interview. But um, Absolutely, man. just, uh, you know, talking about great music and your tribute to Iced Earth and your tribute to Jacob's Well. And um, I just think you're a great artist and a great songwriter. And I think, you know, people need to know that. And uh, And your friendship, I value that. And hopefully maybe one day, if you're ever in North Carolina or in the Carolinas and you're somewhere near, maybe we can hook up and hang out or something. It'd be really cool. Absolutely. We go there, like I said, so it's not out of the question. And like you were saying, you know, like you meet people, you know, on with the internet, you know, you meet people on different Facebook pages and, and different, you know, uh, podcasts and different places. And to actually get to see someone face to face and, like it's almost like meeting in person. I mean, now we have, we know what each other look like and we know what our voices sound like. And we've had like a real conversation. And I think that's, what's cool about like podcasts and stuff is because you get to actually meet the people instead of just, you know, see what, what, see what they type to your response, you know, your comment or whatever. And, you know, it's uh, like, I get a kick out of just really meeting people like it's one thing just to you know thank you for your kind words or whatever but to meet somebody and see what they look like and and see their heart you know because when you read a comment or you read a text you don't see the person's heart you don't see their eyes you don't see their mannerisms you're just guessing what they mean by it you know what i mean that's why i think a lot of that stuff gets misconstrued but to sit like this and you know talk and hang out i love it it means a lot for sure it's yeah. cool and yeah, it does. And like I said, I've met a lot of great friends through the internet and, you know, we actually are a member of a group and we usually chat like three or four times a week and we just kind of hang out with each other and, and you really get to know a lot of great people that way. And, and, uh, so, I mean, it's a great thing. And, um, some of them I met, some of them I haven't, but you know, maybe one day that'll, you know, that'll change and hopefully, yeah. You know, like I said, we get a backdoor to this COVID and that'll be something that'll be great. And uh, but again, I, I do thank you. Um, I'm humble today to actually get a chance to do this. And uh, you're a wonderful guy, Gene. And I tell everybody how great of a guy you are. And um, you're just so down to earth and you're willing to do these things. And and um, I just want to say that um, I know a lot of things get misconstrued, but they are rock stars and celebrities out there who all are, always have this holier than thou attitude, you know, and you're definitely not one of them. And you're just a regular guy like the rest of us. And I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and, you know, this, is, it's a, it's a great project that we're talking about. And, and, you know, it, even though people might say, you know, it's, uh, oh, it's just another remix or whatever. I think it's really special. And, and to get to come on here and talk to you about it, you know, I, I love your work, your poetry and stuff and your, and your, you know, writing, I have your books and I think you're a talented person as well, you know, so it's just as much an honor for me. So I appreciate uh, this time for sure. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there and um, you have an awesome day, Gene. And, uh, well, sir. hope we'll do this again sometime soon. Absolutely, man. All right, man. Have a great day, brother. We'll see you later, Wild Bill. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs>